Okay, if you're still working on it, no problem. Uh, I guess what we'd want to do here is we see that it's on rough horizontal ground, uh, horizontal flat as well. Coefficient of friction is 0 0.4, and we've got a pulling force. And interesting to notice the force is horizontal. We're obviously going to do some of them where they're not horizontal, where they're acting at an angle. And we just want to find out what the value of the friction would be. So here I've got the weight is 5g, and I've got r. Pretty easy, you can tell me what r is equal to. Because when we resolve in the up and down direction, we get that r is equal to 5g, which means that the maximum value that the friction can take is mu times r, which is 2g, or 19.6 newtons. That's the maximum value that the friction can take. So all we really need to do now for part a is think, OK, well, if it's being pulled with 10, what would the friction force be? 10. It's just going to oppose it with 10. So the value of the friction here is 10. And the, the detail of that, which it didn't ask you for, it's not moving. In B, it's just going to be 19.6. It's being pulled with 19.6. So the friction is going to be 19.6. And Sadia, what would you say about how that was behaving, that block, if you were to? It's on the verge of moving. It's on the point of slipping. It's about to move. And then C, you've got a diagram here where it's 30 out to the right. The friction is? Yeah, the friction is going to stay as 19.6. And in this particular scenario, it is going to accelerate. OK, it's going to accelerate. Nothing um, that radical, hey? We'll just do two worded examples, and then the rest of the lesson is just a set of questions. If you can finish them in the lesson, then your homework's just going to be to do paper B. OK? So next one you've got here is, again, it's just a little bit worded, but it's pretty much the same as what we've just been doing. A particle of mass 5 kilograms is being pulled along a rough horizontal surface by a hor horizontal force of magnitude 20 newtons. Better keep in the normal reaction there as well. Now, what you might like to do on the diagram is you might like to say that this is friction. Or what you might like to do, to save yourself a bit of confusion, you might like to write here mu r. How do I know that I can write mu r here? How do I know it's going to be its maximum value? Once again? Because friction is that. Well, the maximum value of friction is that. But how do I know the friction has reached its maximum in the context of the question? It says it's being pulled along the floor, and it says there's going to be part B, it says there's acceleration. So I know it's reached its maximum value. OK, so we're going to, first of all, find out what friction is. So in order to do that, we're going to resolve in the up and down direction, which tells me that R is 5G and mu is 0 0.2. So the value of the friction is 5G times 0 0.2, which is just G or 9.8 newtons. So we can now actually go back to the diagram, and I can add on that this is 9.8. So part B of the question, we're trying to find out the acceleration, which means we're going to say that F is equal to MA, and the direction that we're interested in is it's accelerating to the right. So I can go back to my diagram, and I know it's going to be moving in this direction that I've got here. Remind me of what's my resultant force for this. Um, 20 yeah, 20 take away mu r, which in this case we just worked out is 9.8. Uh, and that is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So here you get 10.2 equals 5a. So the acceleration is 2.04, uh, which if we wanted to do it to two significant figures, we could do. But we'll just. That's what it is. The acceleration is 2.04 meters per second squared. OK. Once you've written that, if you start reading the next question on the next page. OK, last bit, and then it's just practice.
Similar. Friction is on a slope now, so you know all that work we did on things on slopes? We're going to start using everything that we've done previously now, and the questions you're going to do, it's going to use all of them. So a particle of mass 2 kilograms sliding down. Sliding down is important here. Why am I saying sliding down is important? What did it tell me about the friction? It's going up. Friction's going up. It's sliding down. Friction is going up. And it's on a rough slope, inclined 30 degrees horizontal. Ah, here. They tell us that the acceleration is 1 meter per second squared. And we're going to try and find out the coefficient of friction. We don't know it. We're going to try and find it out. So draw your diagram. 30 degrees. It is sliding down at 1 meter per second squared. It's got a mass of 2g, so its weight. Oh, sorry, it's got a mass of 2, so its weight is 2g. Make sure your normal reaction is drawn normally, i.e. perpendicular. So which direction is the friction, did we say? Up the slope. So there's my mu r that I've got there. What do I need? I need to take this 2g. Do you remember this? I hope you remember this. And I'm going to split. What's this one here? 2g cos 30. Good. 2g cos 30. 2g sine 30. Now, this one probably doesn't need this extra diagram. But as soon as you've got more than these forces on, you are going to need the extra diagram. So I would want to draw a diagram like this with my r, with my mu r, with my 2g cos 30 and with my 2g sine 30, like this. And which thing am I interested in finding out, first of all, do you think? Left and right or up and down? No, I'm actually going to do up and down first. Why am I going to do up and down first? Because I want to find out what r is, because I need that for left and right. So if I resolve in the perpendicular to the plane direction, that direction, r is 2g cos 30. This may seem obvious, but write this down and you get a mark. Don't write it down. Don't get the mark. So then we can find out. We can go straight into uh, doing f equals ma. And this time it's going down the slope. So I'm going to just tell the examiner I know which way it's going. My resultant force, by looking at this diagram, is 2g sine 30 minus mu 2g cos 30. Can you see what I've done there? I've done. 2g sine 30 minus mu r, which we've just worked out in that previous bit. And all of that is equal to the mass, which is 2, times the acceleration, which is 1. That looks pretty complicated, but actually when you think about it, that's a number, 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 that's a number. There's only one variable there. So it's an equation that you can just solve straight away. And we'll put that into our calculators. Let's rearrange so we get 2g sine 30 minus 2 equals mu 2g cos 30. Just rearranging that. So mu is equal to 2g sine 30 minus 2 over 2g cos 30. Anyone calculate that? No? 0 0.46 to two significant figures. Why am I happy with the answer 0 0.46? Between 0 and 1.5. It's a small number. It's the right kind of size for that. So just to take you through what we did there again, the diagram was really helpful, resolved the forces. This second diagram made it easy, even easier to do. We found out what R was, because we need that for the friction. And then we did F equals MA, substituted it all in there, bam, came out with 0 0.46 for the coefficient of friction. OK? So I'll leave this one up on the board. What you're going to do, though, is you're going to work through these questions. You may not want to do all three of these. Maybe you want to just do one or two of that first question. Um, and then the rest of them, you need to do all of them. Three, four, five. Uh, I think it goes on to the next page as well. Six, seven, and possibly even the challenge question as well. The answers are there so that you can keep an eye if you've got them right or not. And we'll do those um, up on the whiteboards. Did you want me to leave it on this page just yet? Yeah? OK, guys. Uh, let's go.